Well, you have a fascinating story, and I, I'll uh, just review for our viewers uh, just uh, a little, just a capsule of your background, but grew up in a tough neighborhood, mm -hmm. uh, single mom mm -hmm. a family uh, in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and uh, had a real stuttering problem growing mm -hmm. up, Yeah, and somehow ended up uh, as a award-winning reporter, uh, nationwide, international reporter for CBS. Uh, that's a pretty quick uh, quick way to state your journey, but uh, take us through a little bit of your experience because it's a it's a life that we'd like to see a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of young people. Achieve. Well, I, I think it speaks to what's so wonderful about this great nation we live in that all things are possible. Um, I was raised by a single parent, a working class family, like like many of your students. How many siblings did you have? Uh, I have an older brother and sister. I was the youngest. Someone asked my mother once, years later, uh, how was she able to send three kids to college? And she said it was simple. You will go to college or I'll beat you to death. <laughs> uh, she's an old school Southern woman. Um, but I didn't learn to read until I was 12. I stuttered until my junior year in college. How did you get, did they just pass you along in school? Yeah, yeah, back before social promotions had a name, that's what was going on. I mean, I, I went to the same school my older brother and sister went to, and they were both strong students. My mother, despite working multiple jobs, was active, so we were known, she was known around the school. And it was just assumed that I was a good student, which is quiet. Uh, fortunately, I was a good athlete, and so my reputation in school was based on my athletic ability, not necessarily what'd you, my... What did you do? What did you play? I uh, played football, wrestled, and ran track. Now, I never could have played ball at this great u university, but... Uh, oh, but you, know. you have any eligibility left? Would you? <laughs> <laughs> you might take me on? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I... No. No, I but so, I, I so love the but game. somehow you you were illiterate basically. Yes, and and still had moved to what would that be the sixth grade or something? Yeah, grade exactly grade? right. And I was and what happened was I started failing math, and so they tested me to see why I was doing so poorly in math. Come to find out, I couldn't read the directions because I've been faking it. I've been you know uh, I was also blessed with a good memory, so I could memorize pro projects. And then once math became more complicated with directions and more assignments were based on what happened in class as opposed to taking work home and working on it and bringing it back, uh, I was exposed as being functionally illiterate, which was a painful, painful point for me and for my family. And in the book, which is called Step Out on Nothing, I talk about, for me, the importance of family, the importance of faith, the importance of working hard. And because of my mother's um, undying optimism, uh, her faith, uh, and uh, her willingness to, to work hard with me. I got the help that I needed. In fact, one of the reasons why I'm a journalist today is because I know the value of words um, because of my stutter. And stuttering, like in many ways, st being a stutterer is like being an alcoholic. I mean, you never get over it. You learn to manage it. So I'm still a stutterer. I've just learned to manage it. Do you yeah. ever stutter? Uh, ever catch yourself? Uh, I've never stutter? stuttered on national television. I have in, when I worked in local television. But uh, I, I know what my triggers are. I can't allow myself to get worn down. I can't allow myself to get angry or, or nervous, which sometimes in places like Afghanistan can be a little tough. Hard to do. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, well, you know, of course, this, this whole subject has risen in the consciousness yeah. of the world because of the King speech. Yes, movie. wonderful movie. Yeah, and, and there, I, I was, I guess, completely ignorant about the, the causes of stuttering, but mm -hmm. I guess there he was left-handed and they made him uh, use his right hand and things like that. Is that... Well, is there any, any evidence that that contributes to stuttering? The, the, the science at this point uh, suggests that it is um, uh, an electronic issue, that, that, there, that, there's, that there's a uh, neurological connection between your brain and your, and your speech, that something sort of, um, it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it kind of goes offline for a mm -hmm. moment when you're speaking. And so those things about being left-handed, right-handed, like I'm left-handed, but went to Catholic school, was forced to learn to write right-handed. So those things aren't necessarily connected with stuttering. But there, there, is, there is this disconnect. And there's research going on right now to try and find out if, in fact, there is uh, a DNA fiber which, which determines. Because there, there are about 3 million stutterers in the, in the U.S. Did, did any of your kids stutter? No. My mother uh, is a stutterer. Uh, not as severe, severe as mine. My sister is also a stutterer. So how do they? How do you get out of it? How, what kind of therapy did you go through? Well, fortunately now there there are wonderful resources in every state in this country that can provide. I mean, they can now take a child as young as two or three years old and teach them to uh, manage their stutter. In my case, there weren't that many resources available. 
Uh, and so uh, it wasn't until I got to college. I had a wonderful professor in college, old school, kind of a gruff guy. And um, he recognized the symbols of the signs of my stutter. Uh, like one of, one, of the, one of the signs is, for instance, I tend, one of the great benefits of being a stutterer is it forces you to think before you speak, which in this day and age isn't a bad skill to have, right? Especially in your job. Yeah, right? So, uh, and at that point, I was really struggling with my stutter. If you'd asked me a question, it might take me a long time to answer. Anyway, so he recognized my issue. He, he worked with me. So we would do things like he would have me speak with pencils in my mouth. He would have me read the newspaper. And that would force me to focus on the feel of words. Or he'd have me read Shakespeare backwards to focus on the sound of words. And then we made a list of words that I struggle with. This is when you're 13, 14 Oh, no, no, no. This is when I was a junior in college. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah. I was a stutterer until my junior year of college. Uh, again, because I played, I played football, I wrestled in college. My, uh, I was known more as an athlete than anything else. You were else. at Ohio Wesleyan? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Small Division three school. Mm -hmm. uh, about 2,400 students, small Methodist school. And so he helped me learn to manage my stutter. And since that time, I, I've thought about meeting with a professional uh, speech pathologist just because, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. And, but there's still words that I avoid. Um, I, one of the reasons why I work out five or six days a week, not purely for, for vanity reasons, but because I know how important it is for me to be as rested and as, as possible when I'm going places. Because, for mm -hmm. instance, if I go someplace like Afghanistan where I may not sleep for two or three days, I have to be as physically fit not to get worn down mm -hmm. uh, because if I do, then I tend to stutter. So, so I understand with the athletic talent, uh, how you made it through. And Talent got is a to, generous word, but thank you. Got to <laughs> college on scholarship, I assume. Yes, sir. But to, to go from that experience to uh, journalism, a broadcast journalism, mm -hmm. seems to me to be quite a leap. <laughs> well, one, because of my early issues with literacy, uh, I, I knew the power of words and fell in love with words. You figure by the, you know, most kids when they're in middle school, they're, they're beginning, you know, boys are beginning to look at girls, right? But because words, and I read my first book, uh, Old Man in the Sea, when I was almost in high school, and, and just the joy and how the world opened up to me. So I, I love the love words by the time I went to college. When I learned to manage my stutter, I fell in love with the sound of words and being able to express yourself. As a journalist, fundamentally my job is to give voice to the voiceless. I know what it means to be voiceless and, uh, and, and, and what a blessing it is. My, 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 my wife, who's a Stanford educated woman, I, I married up, uh, has a wonderful saying. She says, tell me God ain't good. He took a boy who couldn't read and put him on 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, my, and, and there's so many people who have stories like mine of how they've had to overcome. I mean, all of us have struggled in our lives. Right. And if you hear most people's backstory, you'll hear a wonderful story of people who have been able to manage their struggles to go forward and, and live their dreams. And I'm certainly living my dream now working at 60 Minutes and CBS. Well, this is a delight. Uh, Thank I've you, really enjoyed Thank you, you. Uh, your work on uh, you. 60 Minutes and otherwise. And I want to give you a little token uh, of our appreciation of you coming to Oklahoma. This is a this is Oklahoma State University uh -huh. tie, the official oh, tie. And it look has that. Pistol Pete, uh, who, uh, by the way, was a real person, Frank Eaton. Oh, sure. Uh, I got a picture of him over there on, the, on the, my uh, buffet, uh -huh, and then uh -huh. there, uh, or break front, whatever you call that. I don't have dine in here. Little hats and cowboy. Uh -huh. But anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a real collector's Thank item. Thank you. And one of the reasons I wanted to give you that is because I saw the piece on CBS Sunday Morning where you were interviewed about your penchant for writing thank you notes. Oh, yes. And that you write thank you notes for at the drop of a hat. Yes, sir. And uh, t tell us about that. I'm, maybe I didn't mention that to our students tonight because I happen to agree with you. Yeah, I mean, my, it, it comes from my mother uh, who raised me to believe that you should always treat people the way you want to be treated. And I think it's telling someone thank you. It's, I, I tell young people all the time, your degree may say one thing, you may be so smart in this or that, you may be the best looking person on campus. But if you don't have manners, if you're not polite, I've discovered in this life that, that being kind can take you so much further than other things will. And so when people are kind enough to, to give me their time, because oftentimes I see folk in difficult points in their life, I just want to say thank you. And it's nice to have a handwritten note. I mean, email is wonderful, and that's fast, and the kids like that. But to, to know that someone sat down and penned a, a note that says thank you, I, I think is a nice gesture. 